Hello everybody, uh, 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 welcome back. Yesterday uh, we discussed about uh, different type of uh, seismic waves and mainly uh, the body wave and the surface wave and we also discussed about uh, uh, that the mo about their motion and their typical characteristics likewise uh, the P waves can pass through, uh, they are the compressional wave, they can pass through all uh, medium whereas the S wave they have the capability of sharing so and and they are the transverse wave they can only pass through uh, solid whereas the low wave again they are the surface wave and Rayleigh wave is also surface wave having the motion that is uh, related to low wave we are having it moves the land side by side whereas the Rayleigh wave has having elliptical. So in short we experience all type of motion at the time of an earthquake ok. So, uh, we, we started talking about the earthquake, we will move faster to that and the this part we already discussed yesterday. So, uh, and we in short we talked about little bit about the earthquake also. So, earthquake is a process where uh, or it is a phenomena where sudden uh, energy which has been stored within the crust is been released along weak zones. And uh, the, it, the surface manifestation of such displacement or dislocation is very well seen in form of uh, the active faults. We will talk later about this, what are the different type of active faults and all that, how we can identify those and why it is so important for or important for the society. Because uh, this helps in reducing the seismic hazard in, and, um, in any seismically active region. So, so identification of fault lines and knowing that where earthquake will occur and when it will occur, it is extremely important in developing countries ok. And particularly in India, uh, we have uh, so many seismic sources available like in Andaman, we have in Himalayas and in, in Kutch region. So, we need to have uh, this detail uh, with us. So, uh, yesterday we were talking about this that uh, if you push your two palms against each other and try to slip. Uh, so, there will be some sort of an pressure which will be developed um, on, on your palms and then when you slip this you will find some jerks which are coming on your hand. So, that jerk is your vibration uh, which is very typical to the, the when the energy sudden energy stored is released ok. So, energy is getting stored here and then when there is a slip you will find that the, uh, the some vibrations are been passed on to your uh, to your hand side ok. So, that is one one way you can understand that how earthquake occurs. So, so for example, two uh, plates or the blocks along the weak zone here are are colliding with each other or they are uh, there is an uh, energy which is getting stored here because you are applying force from either side and then sudden release of that along due to the slippage along this uh, plane, you will find that there is an uh, vibrations which have been triggered. So, that, that process is an earthquake. Uh, now, uh, as I told that uh, uh, there is extreme, it is extremely important to identify the fault line. This is a map of uh, uh, from US, a very famous uh, uh, fault system has been shown here. This is what we call the San Andreas fault system. So, we have multiple faults line, fault lines on the surface okay, which have been identified by US Geological Survey and other research groups in US. Okay. Now, what uh, uh, the numbers if you look at here, okay, what it says is very, uh, these are the, the numbers which says about the or talk about the slip per year along this particular seg fault segment. Okay. So, you have different slip like uh, 3 to 4 millimeter and 17 millimeter, 9 millimeter, 6 millimeter, 24 millimeter. Now, we need to have for India, we are trying to come up with such uh, maps in Himalaya as well as in Kutch region and try to uh, know uh, the uh, the slip rates ok. That is what we call the slip rate along the along the particular fault ok. So, higher the slip rate, the chances of having earthquake, more earthquake, 
more frequent earthquake increases here. Okay. So, the interval between the two earthquakes will be shorter here, whereas the interval between the two earthquakes in this region where the slip rate is low will be less. Okay. So, the interval will be sorry larger here and here you will have the interval will be much shorter. So, we need to have uh, such information to reduce the seismic hazard in, in the region like Himalayas and, all, on, and in Kutch. Okay. Now, uh, this is another example which has been given that how uh, uh, this different fault line slips and why you are having like uh, uh, different slip along the different fault lines. Okay. So, for example, uh, this has been uh, given and uh, like what, what they did is that if you can take up the playing card uh, set and then and, and try to put and, uh, the pressure on either side. So, what happens that uh, the, the playing cards, each playing card you consider that they are at the contact is a fault line. Okay. Uh, so, they will slip at different rate, it, they will not slip at the same rate. So, that, that is what is happening in, in nature also. So, you are having uh, the example is from here, okay, where, where the Pacific plate is sliding or subducting below the North American plate and, and then slip uh, along the, uh, the different fault lines is different, it is not the same. So, that is best explained if you can do this experiment on your own and try to understand that how the each card or the contact between the each card slips. Okay. That is your fault line. So, here the movement is uh, um, right lateral where the right side is coming towards us and the left is away, moving away from us. Okay. And so, so this has been explained how, how this slip. Okay. So, whenever the, the it will, it will not slip every, uh, every day, but, but it will, it will accommodate the, the strain along those weak zones. Okay. So, strain is getting accommodated or accumulated along this weak zones and the time will come after it crosses the threshold limit, it will break or it will slip and that will result into the, uh, the earthquake phenomenon. Okay. So, now uh, a deformation of rock under tectonic stresses. So, it is a simple uh, 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 stress strain diagram which explains that, uh, that if you keep on increasing uh, uh, the, st the stress, okay, eventually at one point of time it will break. Okay. So, initially uh, the, the material, all material within the earth is an elastic, uh, has an elastic property okay. and then initially they deformed uh, up to an elastic limit and then there will be inductile deformation which will go on and finally it will break or okay, the fracture. Now, this fracturing or the point where it breaks okay, is your earthquake. So, this is a very uh, well understood. So, so we you keep on uh, increasing the stress, a rock deforms elastically then plastically before ultimate failing or breaking in an earthquake. Okay. So, this point or the breaking is your earthquake. Okay. So, a complete brittle rock fails as at its elastic limit. So, each material has a different elastic limits. So, but what in short we want to understand here is that the all material will eventually break at one point of time. Okay. So, for example, if you take a uh, rock block, then you are, you are uh, applying pressure here. So, it will initially it will deform okay. and then some very blur lines are coming up and these are the, the weak zones actually. So, this is what happens within the earth also. Okay. Earth, so, these are the weak zones which are coming up and finally, if you keep on applying further, it will break. So, there is a displacement if you can see here. So, this has been displaced. Okay. So, this is seen on the surface or it is preserved on the surface whenever there is a displacement which occurs along the and this what we call either the fracture or we can say is as in conjugate joints. Okay. And in in a broader sense we can also talk and say that this is this is a kind of a fault which has occurred. Okay. So, earthquake forecasting and prediction particularly. So, forecasting uh, identifies both earthquake prone areas and man made 
structure that are specially vulnerable to the damage from shaking. Okay. Because what happens at the time of earthquake is as we have discussed about that mostly we will observe different type of waves which are generated and those waves will result into strong seismic shaking. And we need to understand that what will be the magnitude of an earthquake, how far it will be uh, triggered that is the source, how far is the source where we are leaving. Uh, so, so the man-made structures okay, which are vulnerable to such shaking. So, whether the, the earthquake shaking will be strong in our area or not that we have to understand. Okay. Then earthquake prediction refers to uh, attempt to estimate precisely okay, when the next earthquake on a particular fault. So, these are the weak zones which we are calling fault is likely to occur. Now, I have a question here because I keep this is not we cannot do very precise uh, prediction of an earthquake. Okay. It is difficult, but we can we can have a range where we can say that okay, fine the earthquake may occur within uh, 25 years or 50 years or 100 years, but it is difficult to say the precisely. Okay. But yes, of course, you can predict that when the next large earthquake is expected on a particular fault. Okay. So, that at least we can we can talk about. So, there is an attempt you can do and there are, there is a field or the, the branch of uh, our sciences which deals with uh, such type of studies are termed as is known as uh, paleo seismology. So, if, if time permits I will talk I will give one lecture on paleo seismology and the type of work we are doing in Himalaya and how we have identified the signatures of the old earthquakes or the ancient earthquakes which are preserved on the surface in Himalayan region and in Kutch region. So, <coughs> further the earthquake forecasting is based largely on the elastic rebound theory and plate tectonics. Okay. So, the elastic rebound theory here uh, suggests that, that if the fault surface do not slip easily past one another, energy will be stored in elastically deformed rocks. Okay. So, energy will get as we were talking about then the strain will get developed or, or will, will get preserved within the rocks. Uh, so, if it, it keep on slipping or it, it slips continuously then uh, no energy will be stored, but it if it is not uh, it does not slip okay, the energy will, will be stored in an elastically deformed rocks. Okay. Just as uh, in a steel spring. Okay. So, you, you try to compress and, and then finally, when it has been released, it will result into the vibrations. Okay. So, currently seismologists use plate tectonic motions. Okay. So, as I was talking in the initial that we have now the GPS global positioning systems, where we can measure uh, the, the movement of the plates at a millimeter accuracy. Okay. So, this also again we are doing in India with the help of Ministry of Earth Science, we are putting lot many GPS stations in Himalaya to know and to measure the crustal deformation which is going on in that area. Okay. So, the measurements to monitor the accumulation of strain in rocks near the active fault. So, we identify uh, for example, on surface the fault lines and then we try to put the GPS station on either side of this and try to understand that what is the the deformation which is going on between these two points. Okay. So, that what we are doing in Himalaya and this is the. So, anyways like uh, this is one, one very important part. Now, if you look at the elastic rebound theory uh, what we see here. Okay. So, we see that the, uh, the first figure which shows the original uh, of uh, that we are having a fencing and then we are having a fault line over here which crosses this one. So, because of the ongoing uh, uh, tectonic movement, the deformation starts of course, it is it is a elastically deformed here. Okay. It is not displaced, but it is elastically deformed here. So, if you are having GPS stations on the either side, one can easily make out that how much displacement has occurred here. Okay. So, initial points you are having here and then you are having here, but you, you will see that there are then some displacements. So, GPS will keep on taking 24 7 the coordinates of that particular point. <clears throat> and finally, it, the, 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 the land ruptures and releases the energy. Okay. So, this is the, the rupture 
process and the release of energy is your earthquake here. Okay. So, and the rock rebounds to the original undeformed uh, shape. Okay. So, this, this was an elastically deformed here along with the displacement, but then finally it goes back. Okay. So, this portion is finally going back to its original. Okay. And again, the process is repeated again along this fault line or the fall weak zone, the strain will start developing. Okay. So, the same for example, the San Andreas fault system has been shown here. So, initially it deforms elastically and then finally it is released here. So, this again a very famous uh, photograph of uh, the displacement of the fence. Okay, where the fence got offset it along the fault line. So, this is the fault fault line over here and this happened uh, in uh, during an earthquake of 1906 San Francisco uh, where the displacement was measured around 2.6 meters. Okay. <clears throat> Again, there is an example of uh, San Andreas fault system where uh, what they did was across the the fault line here okay they put several gps stations so you can see this uh, gps stations here and then so so what they wanted to measure is that they wanted to see that how this displacement is we can measure okay and how much will be the displacement close to the fault and how much will be the displacement away from the fault so they have measured this and this photograph uh, is the is showing the alignment or away looking Northwest number of uh, uh, so this basically it shows the locations of the GPS and you can you can understand the scale based on the scale that what is the distance here, okay. So what they did this is their their fault and then you have the the different points here that is uh, the uh, and then maximum offset which they they found okay was around 900 mm uh, where the end points offset they found was around 885 mm. The best fit line says suggests that the average displacement was around 782 uh, mm. Okay. So, this one can measure if you are having very precise location of the fault and then you put more uh, GPS station. Uh, so, you can have the close array of GPS station which can measure the, the amount of displacement or around amount of movement which is taking place and the amount of strain which is developed or or stored along this fault plane and you can you can have the prediction that uh, then when when will be the next earthquake here okay now uh, uh, this is a very important uh, part which talks about the uh, the stress built in rocks and then and released periodically okay now this is a very simple and very straightforward diagram which talks about the stress here on the y axis and the time on the the x axis okay and it says that the over the time that is the first if you take the earthquakes are the result of stress that built up over the time okay and the stress gradually builds as tectonic forces so this is the uh, this is the period of the time where the stress is building up okay and the time will come it will break so this sudden uh, breaking or release of the energy is your earthquakes okay so uh, and this is the threshold limit of this uh, region which will uh, after which the, there will be a sudden slip of the of the, uh, the rock blocks okay now the point is that uh, uh, the question remains as whether this is so periodic uh, as we have we are looking here that all all the earthquakes are systematic earthquakes or there are some some changes because this this most of the time what now we have found is that this is not very systematic okay otherwise you can easily predict the earthquake when will be the next one okay in terms of the time you have okay so this is the uh, the uh, the time of questions where no activity will be seen along this one and the strain will keep on developing and finally it will drop out that is the the event okay so these are the events which we see are the earthquakes here okay but now, uh, most of the places what we have found is that uh, this is not exactly uh, 
uh, the same, but it will certain some places it will release uh, the earthquakes have been smaller magnitude earthquakes have been have been seen which have been uh, triggered between the two major one okay so this is one example which has been given okay now uh, if uh, suppose there is an uh, uh, the slip which is or the which is continuously uh, seen what we call creeping okay then you will not have uh, the major earthquake along that fault okay so one of the example of uh, the the creep which has been observed along the Hayward fault which is in part of the San Andreas fault system what you see here is uh, that they, again the people leave uh, uh, on fault and they have houses on fault and so this is and this is a fault line which crosses from here so people are staying on fault and they are having houses on fault but they understand and they know that this fault is creeping and they they also know that when is the expected next earthquake in this region okay but now after the precise mapping of the hayward fault no other construction is allowed on this uh, fault line but people understand because their utilities like pipelines or water pipeline or drainage pipeline or gas pipeline they are getting deformed if they are crossing this fault line and periodically they will have to and uh, get it repaired and they keep on monitoring that uh, the, uh, the that when when whenever it is ruptured okay so they need to fix up those things because they are their their pipelines or the houses are sitting right on the fault okay so this creeps now you can see here the the fault passes through this part here, over here okay and you can see the offset of uh, of the pedestrian uh, boundary here so this is an offset here the fault passes so the movement is somewhat like this here okay. in another one let me remove this one so here the fault is running across this part here it goes along this one over here and these are all the cracks which are very much common uh, which which uh, which are formed uh, when there is a uh, right lateral movement okay so the movement is like this and if you if you see the close up of this one you will realize that how that it creeps okay every time so this is an again uh, a creep which is very well observed so every time what they do is that this is over the over several uh, years this slip has occurred okay so you can see the offset here of of this one this and this it goes here and this is here so this is an amount of offset we are having okay so this is an, this is a result of an creep so every time they will uh, like repair this because they know that this is this cannot be stopped okay so this is an example of creep again on the railway track okay so they, this is an example you can see on the railway track and this offset is over here okay so if you take this it comes here and then it goes like this okay now this they have abandoned this railway tracks the fault runs from here so they have abandoned and these are the two new new uh, railway tracks which were been constructed so over the time they keep on replacing this because to avoid the accident in the area okay so they keep on the because since they have they are having the understanding of this so it is they they try to minimize the the risk in this area okay so that is what i was talking it's extremely important to know that where the fault passes through and what is the type of motion or the pattern of deformation along that particular fault either it is laterally deforming or it is moving up and down so you need to know that part okay and how frequently it moves that is also important so this is one best example of the creeping which is taking place along the San Andreas fault system that is one of the fault that of San Andreas fault system known as Hayward fault. It is an another close up of this you can you can easily look at the offset here okay or this is a deformation which is going on again here. So they, they keep on replacing this and these are the new ones okay. So this is an offset which was been measured in 2004 here and this is an offset in 2006 Hayward fault. Again, as I told that 
the, the uh, utilities are getting deformed. So, this is an example of the, the, uh, the water duct which is displaced along the Hayward fault okay, because of the creeping. So, they know that a giant crack in the earth which passes through their cities. This is an example of uh, Seattle, okay, where they have, they understand that there is an, an uh, the fault which passes through uh, their city. Okay, so this is very important that we need to know that from where which place the fault passes. Okay, now uh, coming to the uh, uh, the Indian subcontinent part, we have uh, some information which is available, which talks about the uh, uh, the the deformation and the motion of the, the Indian plate, okay, which uh, goes on. So, so maybe I can, now we can continue this in the next lecture. I uh, will stop here. Thank you very much.